Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to automated build deploy test with Team Foundation Server 2015 and Selenium video series and this video series is part of our ALM with Team Foundation Server video series and in this video we will be talking about automated build deploy test workflow with Team Foundation Server 2015. So the environment prerequisite is one of the exciting and most complex and most important part while working with Team Foundation Server 2015 in a distributed as well as the on-premises way. Well, there is one more way of doing it like on cloud, which is otherwise called as the team system, which we will not be talking about because that's something managed by Microsoft itself. So that environment you don't really even care about. But this is what is pretty important where you're going to host the team foundation server in your premises, in your local environment. So the environment setup is pretty important. So how complex is the environment setup? Well, the architecture of our team foundation server while working with your server and client model is going to look something like this. You will have a build agent and it will have build definitions, of course, and it will have some workflow like which application you're going to build, uh, which test you're going to execute, what kind of test adapter you're going to use and which machine you're going to deploy and all those stuffs. So this workflow will be defined in this particular machine, the one which you're seeing here. And then once the build is done, it should be dropped into a location, right? That's called as a drop location. It can be any machine. It can be a local build server machine or it can be a remote machine as well, which can be accessed from any team across the world. And this drop location will have the web application and the web app test.dll. So this is the DLL which you actually use for testing your application, right? And then you will have a lab environment. Remember the lab environment which we were discussing in the previous video of this video series. So that lab environment will have one more build agent and that will have a web application as well as the deployment script. And you'll be wondering here why there are two build agents. One is in the lab environment and one more in the build agent somewhere else. Well, this build agent which you are seeing in the lab environment is uh, a remote machine, uh, which can be even a Hyper-V machine, which can be any number of machines which executes your test and the applications, meaning the end product of your application. That's where your actual application will be deployed and the test will be run against it. So this build agent is something which is responsible for actually building your source code into a compiled application and dropping that compiled application into the drop folder, right? That's a complete difference between these two build agents, right? And there will be a web client which will actually do one more deployment of web script and also running the web app test. And of course, this is coming from here, right? So this is the architecture. So after seeing this architecture, you'll be wondering how the environment setup will be. So for server 2012 R2 on-prem setup, the actual prerequisite is something like this. You will have a team foundation server 2015. You should have it. And then you should have a SQL server 2014 installed in the machine, which is nothing but in the server machine. And of course you should have Windows Server R2, right? and with a service pack which is preferred and then you should have dotnet 4.6.1 version because with the team foundation server 2015 update one you will actually have to have dotnet 4.6.1 even if you don't have it will automatically install for you right so this is the actual on-prem setup where you'll actually host your team foundation server so if you're going to execute your test in a remote machine which can be a Hyper-V machine, then for distributed setup or the Hyper-V setup, you should also have the following with your server and with your client. So in the server, you should actually have a active directory setup, which can actually talk with your distributed clients, which is running in your Hyper-V. And then you should have a DHCP, which is nothing but the dynamic host client protocol enabled so that you can have a IP address designed for the remote machines and then you should have a DNS which is nothing but the domain naming server service enabled in that uh, in the server 2012 machine and then you should also have Hyper-V ready because without Hyper-V this of course the setup itself cannot be done on a Hyper-V machine 
and then you should have a Windows 8.1 as a guest machine in Hyper-V. And I have mentioned Windows 8.1 as a guest machine in Hyper-V is the reason is because Team Foundation Server 2015 is pretty much new and it expects most of the new components in the operating system. So if you install Windows 7 as the guest machine, then you will have to have some additional uh, DLLs required or some additional packages required to be installed in the guest machine. So it's kind of nagging. That's why I say Windows 8.1 is the best candidate for the guest machine in Hyper-V. And then you should also have uh, a setup network with Windows 8.1. Make sure you have internet connectivity required for installing that test agent. It's because the test agent is something which is going to run in our guest machine so that once the application is deployed in the guest machine, this test agent should execute in there, right? So this setup is also required for the network in Windows 8.1 guest machine. And again, you should also have .NET 4.6.1 for test agent 2015 update one installation, right? And then you should also enable the PS remoting. So the command is enable PS remoting in PowerShell for remote execution, because some of the PowerShell script which is going to be executed from your team foundation server should be executed in your remote Windows 8.1 machine. So if you don't enable this, you will actually end up into a problem. So these are some of the problems which I actually faced while working with this distributed setup. That's why I'm just giving you a heads up. Maybe while you start to set up your distributed environment, these things are the checklist for you to start working with and make sure that these things are ready for you so that you can start working with the same setup which I'm going to show you in this video series. Right, and also make sure that you set up the firewall to have communication with the server and client and enable the port in firewall inbound rules. So if you don't enable the inbound rules of the ports which is executed uh, for talking with the Windows RM, which is nothing but the WinRM and the SQL server and some of the port for communicating with the team foundation server just running in the server R2 will actually not execute. So enable the ports in the firewall inbound rules. And also install IIS and SQL Server Express at least in the Windows 8.1 guest machine. So if you don't install, then probably if your application is actually a ASP.NET application where it requires a IIS and SQL Server, then of course uh, you should have them, right? That's pretty uh, meaningful. So these are the distributed setup which I have for you to show in this video series. So if you're going to work with a ASP.NET application and you're going to deploy that in a remote machine and then start spinning up your test with Selenium, then please make sure that you have these setups, right? So this is the actual prerequisite for having this build deploy test with Team Foundation Server 2015 in your machine. So if you don't have these setups, then I'm sorry that you cannot actually give a try in your laptop or in your desktop machines. So without this, pretty hard. So if you actually have a server set up like this, then you're very good to go. And I think you can do exactly what I'm doing in this video series, right? So that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.